Priority-driven scheduling is a powerful approach to real-time system design. Priorities tell the scheduler what process to run next. By setting priorities in different ways, we can achieve different schedules without changing the underlying scheduling code. A scheduling policy is a rule that selects the next running process. General purpose and real-time operating systems take very different approaches to their scheduling policies. General purpose operating systems try to balance the load across a number of different tasks, but they don't have to worry about timing guarantees. Real-time operating systems, in contrast, have to make sure that tasks finish at certain times. Priority-driven scheduling is one way to help do this. And one of the advantages of priority-driven scheduling is that different ways of setting priorities give us different scheduling policies without changing the underlying code that uses the policies. A process can be in one of three states in the operating system. It can be waiting for data. For example, a control system may be waiting for the next sample in order to determine how to control the system. When that process gets its data, it's ready to run. But only one process on the CPU can be executing at any time. In priority-driven scheduling, each process has its own priority. The scheduler uses these priorities to determine what runs next. And the rule is very, very simple. The highest priority process that's ready to run runs next. A process that's waiting will not be eligible to run but the CPU goes through the priorities of all the ready processes and selects the highest priority process in order to run next. Here's a simple example to illustrate priority-driven scheduling. We typically use one to denote the highest priority process. In this example, we'll use fixed priorities. Remember that the highest priority ready process gets the CPU, and that process continues to execute until either it's done or a higher priority process becomes ready. In this example, we'll use three processes. P1 has the highest priority and has an execution time of 10. P2 has medium priority and an execution time of 30. P3 has the lowest priority and an execution time of 20. Here's our timeline. In this example, we won't be executing periodically. I'll set up the release times of these processes to illustrate some important properties of priority-driven scheduling. So at T0, P2 is the only process that's ready to run, and so it will run. At T equals 15, P1 becomes ready. It has higher priority, so it will preempt T2. At T equals 18, P3 becomes ready but it has the lowest priority, so it can't preempt. P1 will continue to execute until it finishes. At that point, P2 starts to execute, and since it has higher priority than P3, it will run until it finishes. Finally, P3 will execute. We can set priorities in different ways and get different types of schedulers. Fixed or static priorities are assigned at design time. They don't change during execution. It's easier to figure out how fixed priority systems work, but they can make less efficient use of the CPU. Dynamic priority systems change the priority of processes during execution. They're more complex to analyze, but they can make more efficient use of the CPU. To summarize, Priorities tell the scheduler how to choose which process to run next. The scheduler's rule is that the highest priority process that's ready to run will execute next. By setting priorities in different ways, we can get different schedules out of the same scheduler code. We can either set priorities statically at design time, or we can change priorities dynamically during execution.